Now this is the, the low range uh, planetary cluster for want of a better word and where they fail is this um, circlip around here pops out the thrust plate comes forward the pins in here come forward and the um, gears inside are free to um, rattle around inside the, the um, planetary gearbox and you won't be able to use high range or low range and bits and pieces will even fall out into the main um, part of the transfer case so this one's got a modification there it holds the circlip ends apart so it could never loosen and uh, I probably wouldn't be able to get out now if I wanted to this is the high low range um, selector that's it it's uh, in low range there high range there so you can see that the gearbox moves whether it's in high or low range selector shaft when you move the lever forward low range high range so when it's in high range this is pushed back against the gearbox all the time so even if the snap ring or the circlip has gone the um, guts of the gearbox the gearbox won't come forward and you won't lose the guts if you're in low range and that circlip's out it's only uh, relying on gravity or luck to stay in there and um, go down a steep hill that will come forward and all the guts of it will drop out so how it actually uh, works it's another one of those ones with the contra-rotating shaft that's the power um, out to the through the intermediate shaft and out to the, the diffs and this is the power in from the engine so power in from the engine power out to the diffs and the line knows it's a red tape up so it's in high range so you can see it's one to one so a thousand ribs going in, a thousand ribs coming out. Put in low range, and you've got to turn the um, input shaft three times for the output to rotate once. So it's one to three low range, and one to one high range. Simple as anything when you've got it in bits. So if you know how normal diff works, this um, planetary diff takes a little bit to get your head around. But this is the output um, shaft to the um, rear diff. This is what we're going to call a side gear. Well, technically it is a side gear. There's the diff lock dogs there. And that's your diff lock um, pin. It locks, three of these lock into the dogs. You got 55 teeth around there. I'll just put that into its home. This is the diff carrier. We're going to call it the carrier. And these uh, equate to the pinion gears in a normal diff. And this is your other side gear. So you've got 55 teeth there, you've got 26 teeth there. And if you do your maths, that works out to 68 to 32, which is where you get your um, torque differential. So you get 68% of your torque going to the rear diff, 32% going to your front diff. So diff lock dogs go into those teeth, and they're pretty hefty. There's three of these, and I think even with one of those, you would never do any damage. So there's no fear about the centre diff blowing up or the centre diff lock, it's as strong as all buggery. So the diff lock pins go in there, get it the right way around, and your output to the front, um, front diff.
So there, diff lock selector fork goes into that collar and you've got three of these but just for demonstration when diff lock's locked diff lock's free so they drop in quite easily so if anyone has centre diff engagement problems it's not here because this is easy as pie the um, spline on the outside of this is your the power feed into the centre diff from the um, after it's gone through the lower high range and after you've gone through the intermediate shaft and the half gears and then the power goes in here and that centre spline there power comes out to your front prop shaft. So if you have a bit of trouble um, working out how this all works it's why how these are different to other gearboxes or transport cases is they have hollow shafts so that's um, the power from the engine comes down through through here diffs are not locked at the moment power from the engine goes down into the centre diff and through the pinion gears through the side gear of the diff back out through this spline up the shaft to your front prop shaft so this is the um, half gear selector fork and there's the synchro hub there for half gears it's in the, the lower shaft and when uh, you've got the stick forward you're in in half gears when you've got the stick back it's neutral there stick back high range and these gears are spinning all the time whether you're in half gears or or high range because the intermediate shaft is a solid um, piece of metal with two gears and it's um, lock solid so these spin all the time so you've got your drive to the front diff and the intermediate shaft sits in here and it um, it's just one solid lump of metal nothing moves so uh, that's why these two gears are in constant mesh they never stop spinning so there's the whole shebang this is the intermediate shaft there's a um, bearing on an eccentric there that, which does the um, works the internal oil pump that pushes a little piston up and down as it goes around so that's the oil pump that feeds the um, the uh, low range so that one sits sits in there and you get some sort of a inkling of how it all works it's really basic the hardest thing to get your head around in this transfer case is now you've got um, a shaft within a shaft, but once you nut that out, it's um, pretty basic. And when you look at an exploded diagram of the transfer case, it's hard to see that. So this is the same as in any other gearbox or transfer case. There's nothing special about that. So you got um, set a diff down there, which is pretty well they use the same type of center diff in any car that doesn't have a 50-50 front to rear like a Subaru would have the same center diff as that and your low range high range um, planetary gearbox is I think unique to this and T-Model Ford so um, that's it